Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Model Craft Bench with part two here of the Armour Hobby P51B build. So without further ado, uh, having finished basic construction I have started the process of finishing both the wings and the fuselage and obviously it doesn't take much to figure out that these still aren't glued on and nor will they be until they are finished because the fit is good enough for that to be an option. So where I'm at now I wanted to try, and I stress the word try because this may not yet work, but I'll give it a go, to represent some sort of chipping type finish on these painted wing panels. Uh, as most are probably aware, P51 had a putted and painted wing, it wasn't natural metal in most cases. So it stands to reason that some form of wing root chipping is logical at least if not pretty much guaranteed and I actually do have a photograph showing exactly that. In this book, The Mighty Eighth in Colour, Roger A. Freeman, quite an old book but actually a really good one. And here is the said photograph, I'll just try and... This is big, one of the big beautiful dolls in fact, an aircraft that you might identify with being really clean and shiny and here you can see it is anything but that. But note the, the chipping in the paintwork on that wing just by the wing root there and that's what I want to try and achieve here. So it was painted initially with AK Extreme Metal white aluminium you can see. I did harbour some ambition of perhaps performing a bit of chipping around the gun bay panels but I've since decided not to bother so that's why it continues out that far. That once paint once uh, on and dry was coated with the ubiquitous X22. Now remember if you're going to use X22 you must thin it with the Mr. Colour thinners because this stuff or the standard stuff doesn't have to be levelling. Here's the other one. Standard Mr. Colour. Do use this because this thinners has some sort of magical properties within which transforms this Tamiya Acrylic Clear X22 into an abomination from, sorry, from an abomination into something that is actually usable and not just usable but really rather brilliant. So Mr. Colour Thinner, lots of, see how that's pretty thin and I tend to thin it from there as well. Um, yeah, coat of that over the metal to protect that paintwork from chipping operations. I have found over time when you do the chipping that it's quite easy to damage the underlying paint finish if you're not careful so I like to try and sort of seal each layer of work in with the X22 where, where possible. I then put hairspray on it. This is a new can. My hair matters. I don't think it matters if it's firm hold hairspray or not uh, nor do I think the perfume really matters but just ordinary cheap hairspray. This I think was £1.50 and this this ought to last a while. So I decant that into my airbrush just for a bit of control, spray that on, then I've used XF4, very thin mixture of XF4 just to put that suggestion of, of zinc chromate primer on top of the silver and that's then been scuffed, agitated and generally annoyed off by a wet paintbrush and then that was overcoated again with X22 and that has been just rubbed down a little bit with Trizact just to keep it flat I didn't want it to get too glossy so that just to keep it flat that's where that's at now and um, what I'm going to do going forward uh, the paint that I'm going to put on it I've mixed specially this is AK interactive aluminium with just a few drops of a medium grey in it and the reason I've put the grey in it is just to dull the finish off a bit. So instead of looking like a bright silver, it resembles paint more. Now, arguably, and, and factually to be honest, sil aluminium dope or silver, or aluminium lacquer or whatever you want to call it, is silver. It does look metallic. In many photographs it's quite difficult to distinguish it from being a natural metal finish from any distance. But the issue here with a model is, is that these paints inherently are designed to be highly reflective and appear to 
mimic a natural metal finish. So if you don't do something to it to differentiate it, and it's especially the case if you're using a, a, a silver paint to do the rest of the finish, it won't look different enough for it to be obvious that it's different. Um, so I think sometimes in modelling we have to slightly exaggerate some things just to get the effect that we're after. It's important to realise that you aren't necessarily just trying to exactly replicate the real thing but more to replicate the appearance of the real thing and sometimes the best way to do that is to slightly exaggerate things to, to, to give it that differential. Anyway, waffling. I'm now going to use some masking fluid to try and add some really tiny sort of chips and scratches because this being uh, an enamel finish it takes a little bit of time to dry and I'm not convinced honestly that hairspray chipping will actually work with this so rather than risk making a mess I'm just going to use masking fluid instead. I'm going to apply that with a piece of foam. So to get this to be a bit less regulated, because obviously this is a cube, I'm just going to randomly pull chunks out of it like so. And then you can stick it in a pair of tweezers or you can just hold it in your hand, it matters not. Hold it into a ball shape and then when you start to apply your chips it should be able to be somewhat irregular. What you don't want is a, a sort of like a potato stamp effect where you have a series of exactly identical series of chips running along the wing route. That's not what we want. So this is uh, Vallejo masking fluid. There's nothing special about it. It's just the one I have at the moment. I think most, if not all, masking fluids are essentially very, very similar in the way that they behave. And the beauty of this is, if I don't like it, I can just rub it off and start over. So I'm just going to demonstrate roughly what I'm going to try and do. I need a little bit of fluid on the, on the foam. Not too much. And I've just got a piece of ordinary lined paper at the side and I'll just take a little bit of that off. And take my part. I think about where I want the chips to be, bearing in mind where I've already got where. And just touch touch the piece of foam and it'll just deposit a small amount of masking fluid onto the surface of the model. Now I'm going to come up close and show you that I already don't like this because it's too big look. So not an issue. Rub it with your finger and it does that copy dex thing and just roll straight off and we can try again and we can keep doing that as many times as needed until the effect is what we want. And of course it's dried out now, but you get the idea. So I actually cut the foam a little smaller in the end and that's what I've come up with and it's very very hard to see because the masking fluid goes quite transparent once it's dry but there's just some very very small dots and marks which like a lot of things in modelling and especially when working in smaller scales like this you, you, you can spend an awful lot of time doing something which is a very very minor detail on the finished model it's just one of those things <laughs> uh, yeah uh, I'm hoping that these will just give me enough little marks and I, I can use a bit of Trizact and um, maybe even the edge of a scalpel blade and just kind of finagle it once the paint's on and dry but we'll see. So I'm now going to paint it with with the aforementioned mixture. Now I actually have to mask these wheel bays off. A lot of times I like to paint wheel wells afterwards because it's it's easier to mask the outside than the inside in a lot of cases but with the tricky tricky masking on this that obviously wasn't an option and what I'm using to mask it off now is this masking putty. This is the ammo of MIG stuff but again other manufacturers make the same thing. AK do it now as well. And it's just this really weird sort of, I don't know how to describe it, it's kind of bouncy. 
and it stretches. If you pull it slowly, it stretches and stretches and stretches and stretches and stretches. But if you pull it fast, it snaps. It's like a weird rubbery version of custard is the best I can do to explain. But anyway, it's dead easy to use for things like this because you can just pince it into suitable shaped and sized pieces and just insinuate it into the area that you're working and use a cocktail stick or similar just podge it in and make sure it covers up what you need it to cover up without covering up the parts you don't need it to cover up obviously it's far 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 easier than using tape for this kind of thing you could do it with tape but it would take ages you'd have to be some kind of masochist when things like this are around and you can use blue tack too for this um, but the benefit this has over blue tack and these little actuators have got bent and snapped there I'm gonna end up I'm gonna end up put, cutting those off and replacing them I think but yeah the benefit of using this over things like blue tack is it doesn't stick um, it sticks well enough to stay in place while you want it in there but as soon as you're done with it you can just pull it out it's not going to pull detail out with it it's not going to pull paint off and it doesn't leave any sort of residues or bits of itself behind which is another thing that blue tack is quite prone to doing and there you go that is in and you see how quickly that was done weird weird stuff and over time if that stays in there long enough which it won't uh, it kind of flows and flattens out it's really odd stuff you can see how it does that in the can you pull it out it's, it's it's really quite gratifying to play with and i'm probably coming across as a bit of a weirdo saying that but, you know, it's just flowed and molded itself to the tin and then you can mangle it up and pop it back in and within several minutes it's it flowed out again but you can see it moving <laughs> it's the strangest stuff and I, i've had this for well the label is faded you know i've had it for multiple years probably a minimum of five or six years and you can see it it's been used many many times but it somehow amalgamates the overspray paint you can see very slight traces of paint in there it doesn't ruin it it's it's, it's <laughs> It's really brilliant stuff, but I digress. I'm going to spray this. Uh, I've taped the wing to a stick, as you can see. This is just an ordinary sort of medical spatula. I bought a box of these years ago, and they're quite handy for mounting things onto paint. Um, yeah, it's blue tacked. It's sat on a piece of blue tack in there and then taped across the top so that I can, bearing in mind that this, this paint will take slightly longer to dry than the lacquers and acrylics that I normally use. I can spray both sides and then just put it up and let it dry in its own good time. I'm not going to film spraying because it does make a terribly offensive noise I think um, and I, I mean if people want to see an airbrushing lesson or demonstration I, I can probably do something specific for that at some point but anyhow let's get on. And there it is all painted and as you can see it's very much silver but hopefully you can also see that it's kind of dull uh, it's not super reflective and I'm trying to ape a bare metal finish it's it, it's sort of dullish right closer you can probably see that sort of the lumps and bumps where that masking fluid is now as well anyway I switched it back on because I was busy taking out the masking from the wheel well and thought oh I actually probably ought to show this so here goes uh, I tend to use tweezers you could use um, a cocktail stick or something similar but I just grab an end of it get it to start moving and once it starts moving you just pull it out like that done easy peasy and you can see how uh, that blob that I, I put in there earlier is, is already just splodging out by itself and there you go lovely really like this stuff dead handy for things like that um, and as it shows on the picture quite good for uh, masking 
camouflage demarcations. So yeah, that's that. And it is dry. This is oh, maybe a whole 10 minutes since the last segment I shot. And I said it would take longer to dry. And it is dry to the touch now, but it's not fully cured. If you start handling this properly, you're going to leave uh, fingerprints and whatnot. So that will get set aside and left to dry for a day or two before I do anything else at all with it. Well, look at this. Did I go and finish it while you weren't looking? Well, no, honestly, I didn't. But let's let's look at what I've been doing and where I'm up to. And then we're going to be visit foiling. Oops, again. So yeah, as it, as you can <laughs> as you can see, since I've just disassembled the whole thing, it was just sitting together. Um, and the fit of this thing is exceptional, honestly. So here, the towel plane is just sat on top of the fuselage there, and if the camera will focus on it which I think it just did you could see I'm um, admittedly this is without glue that there is a sort of a joint line along the front of that fairing but in this scale the effort required to completely remove that especially bearing in mind I'm using foil outweighs the benefit of just um, outweighs the benefit that's the wrong way to put it but the effort to get rid of that seam is greater than what I'm willing to put in for this model at this scale so I'm actually just going to live with it um, which is a skill which I think many modellers could, should, maybe, learn to have. I think sometimes learning to live with minor uh, imperfections is actually a good thing. Uh, it saves our sanity, if nothing else. Anyway, uh, as you can see, I have been busy with the foil and these control surfaces are in fact painted. The same as the wing is, which we already talked about. The wing does have a couple of decals on there are still some stencils to go on the top although the lower surfaces are done I'll just take this back end off again save embarrassingly throwing it all over the bench again stencils are fitted on the under surfaces not that they're easy to see uh, and it actually has a coat overall after decaling of x22 heavily thinned um, but I'm going to go into that in the next episode because I'm going to look at deckling in the next episode to save this video getting too long. Anyway, foil. So, look at it. Glinty glint. I just love the way foil looks on a model. really do. I, I, I'm start I really enjoyed doing it too and I'm starting to get to the point where I'm looking at projects to do simply so that I can put foil on them. I probably need my head looking at, don't I? So let's take that wing off and get that out of the way. These pieces. I've done a new thing on this one. I have foiled around that rear window. Now I had theorised to myself, and I apologise for what the camera is doing here, but it is difficult for it to cope with this finish. Uh, I'd theorised that canopy framing would be possible with this method, and I've proved to myself here that it is in fact possible. I glued in the windows and then I filled around it with the frame. I've also been excused the self congratulatory tone but I've been quite success successful here with foiling around come on focus the wing root area and these relatively difficult curves underneath and indeed that forward cowling which I wasn't completely convinced I would manage. I don't need to do this one because the shark's mouth covers it so I'm actually not going to bother uh, because this this one would have been the most difficult to get right but it aided should you need to foil this front end on, on something like this you're aided by the panel lines and the panels because in fact if you push the shrinking or wrinkles if you prefer to, to put it that way if you artfully push the wrinkles and shrinking towards those panel lines and panels panel lines will actually soak it up for want of a better way of putting it and or you can simply cut that crinkled area away and follow it separately afterwards same goes at right at the front there's that panel under the very chin there which actually amply assists with fitting foil and dealing with those wrinkles that want to come anyway I'm sniffing again sorry uh, I'm going to, to fit a panel or two and just talk through the process again. Uh, I have made some minor changes I suppose with the way I'm doing it in more complex areas which I'll mention 
tools required. A nice clean surface for applying adhesive to your foil. This is just a piece of plastic card and um, I keep it clean, wipe it down and keep it smooth. Um, I just use this piece of plastic card because I have it uh, but there are some marks and cuts in it uh, which can tran um, when you're putting the glue on you can end up getting an impression of that so this is one situation where probably a ceramic tile is actually a better option than this piece of plastic but I don't have any so I'm going to use this uh, cotton buds of cocktail sticks for burnishing was my favourite one that we've met before in the previous two videos and if I remember I will link those in the description. This is another cocktail stick with a sharper end on it and I've been using this just to initially mark out panel lines. IPA is a completely essential part of the process. Isopropyl alcohol, not pale ale, India pale ale, it's isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, I think even denatured al alcohol but your normal sort of 90% medical grade this is what this is scissors tweezers and scalpel as ever and the glue every single time I mention foil I get 58 comments about what the glue is and every single time I, <laughs> I show you I have to mention it in the description and I will again and I'll leave links it's Microscale Industries Inc micro metal foil adhesive is what I use okay without further ado I need a piece of tissue can put that to the side. so process I've got two cotton buds one's for putting glue on and one is for cleaning so soak the tip with IPA here is my foil I use Reynolds wrap as we already know so I'm going to do this panel here first things first lay your piece of foil over it and figure out what you need to do with regard to sizing how big it needs to be you want it to be bigger than the place you're going to cover but it doesn't need to be excessive just big enough to allow you a little bit of room for error with positioning cutting out pieces beforehand and then applying them that are exactly to size is, is liable to end in tears uh, I haven't bothered yet you can get away with doing a straight edge and applying it to a straight edge but beyond that I think it's probably just a waste of effort so that's big enough to cover the panel so now I've got that placed on my flat surface clean the model it is already clean but clean it anyway let that dry by itself I say it's already clean there is some smut on that cotton bud and likewise clean the foil and this is where if your application mat has got any bumps or irregularities on it it will transfer itself a little bit but it's not a massive issue clean that like so with the alcohol I apply the glue with a cotton bud I have messed about with other techniques but this just works well enough and it's easy and it's quick with larger pieces of foil for larger models it's possibly not the best way um, but that's not an issue right at this point now as you can see immediately that glue is puddled and pulled up um, in a way that water based paint sometimes can on a surface if you try to apply it like that clearly you're going to end up with a very very messy ripply surface which is not what we want so I get my IPA bud and clean it again but this time I'm not cleaning it all the way to perfectly clean what I'm doing is kind of just mixing it with that glue and spreading it out and then I'm going to go straight in with some more adhesive and this time you should see that it spreads cleanly and doesn't do that whole surface tension thing. Got a nice smooth application of glue on there. And then that has to sit on there and dry. Now the slight modification I've made to the method that I mentioned, when doing tighter and more complicated curves like these areas around here, 
I found that if I put the glue straight on the model as well, the foil sticks a lot better and it's less prone to pulling away from edges and whatnot. So with areas like these wing root fairings and the more curved places, I've started to actually apply glue straight on the model, literally just like this. Fairly carefully, I don't want it all over everything, but you see where I've got glue there in that wing root by the shine. It dries very quickly and very smoothly. It does definitely applies to the plastic easily, more, more easily than it does to the foil. I'll take that back off again because I don't want it on there yet. Um, let both dry and then when you introduce them together it's kind of almost like a contact adhesive sort of thing going on. It, it just sticks really, really well. Um, and I found that to be extremely useful with the tighter curves, just helping everything sit down properly. Sorry, I have to clean that again now. There we go, right, so this is nearly dry. You've got to wait for this to dry. And you know when it's dry because it becomes completely transparent. Don't be tempted to go for it when it reaches this sort of stage because what will happen is it will look like it's going fine and then there will be just like this bubble effect in it that you really can't get rid of. It, it, it isn't worth it, just wait. You see it's drying as you look. That is drying out, almost there. Wafty wafty. There we go. Full invisibility reached and off we go. We can fit this now. So align it with the area. That's this large panel here that you're going to put it. Like so you can use a cotton bud to initially press it down if you prefer. really make any difference you can go straight in with the stick but do be careful because you can induce wrinkles that wouldn't otherwise appear if you're not careful I'll try and do this a bit closer but forgive me if it doesn't come out right and burnish it down with the stick and as soon as you start to do that you should start to see that panel line detail coming through can hear it if you can't see it. You can see an imperfection in that finish. That's actually a, the kit. There's a little bit of a sink markage where one of the plastic hinges is on the back side. I could have filled and smoothed that previous to fitting the foil, but honestly, what, one of the things I like about the foiling finish is, is the little, just very, very subtle texture it imparts to the model just makes it look so much more realistic than silver paint. There, see the panel lines? I've pushed them in just initially with that larger, more blunt and smooth cocktail stick. Just, this one's a bit sharper. This is a bamboo stick as opposed to a wooden one. Well, I guess bamboo is wood, but I'd much prefer the proper wooden cocktail sticks for most things, but all the cheap supermarket ones these days are made from bamboo. So one has to search out good quality cocktail sticks for modelling. It's a little bit of residual adhesive on the outside, that does happen, I'll just give that a little clean. So at this point, that's how it looks. There is a bit of texture there, there's quite a lot of marks, you can see the panel lines very easily, you can see there's a couple of lumps in it at the back there minor lumps it's all good that's exactly how it will look so scalpel time you see a lot of reference to always use a new blade it's not necessary to use a new blade to be honest a brand new blade can actually sort of snag and drag and be really irritating so a slightly duller blade is actually better am I in short yes um, but just not a completely ruined one. Using my middle, my sort of third finger to guide me, just to resting it on the model or my other hand, because I don't have very steady, steady hands. Just 
ever so gently don't apply too much pressure if you applying a lot of pressure and you slip you're going to damage the surface of the model if you're not applying much pressure and you slip you've got a reasonable chance of getting away with it. obviously I've got the dropsies today let's pull off this excess foil then gently gently because if you didn't quite get that cut right you run the risk of tearing the piece of foil you've just applied and then you have to start all over again especially in the little corners like here at the back where you've got that little tab so excess foil removed and hopefully if I get the light right here you can see the kind of yeah there you go see that halo of glue that's come from the foil that was there I need to get rid of that with the IPA soaked cotton bud isopropyl alcohol just removes this glue perfectly But what you tend to find on first application is it leaves a slightly sticky surface so I'm going to flip to the clean end of the cotton bud you will get through a lot of cotton buds doing this and then clean it again but this time with the fresh clean end and a fresh application of alcohol and that will absolutely clean the surface and no left with this which looks fine but it's it's not great there's a lot of texture there I think if you just left the whole model like that it would look fairly rubbish so we have to smooth it out and for that as you probably already know I sand it this is a piece of wet and dry sandpaper this is actually 800, 800 grit but it's quite well worn so if you're going to use a new piece this is probably closer to 1000 grit than it is to 800 use it wet mostly so that you don't wear the paper out instantly and just very gently I should stress gently start to sand the piece of foil that you've just fitted now if I stop prematurely and dry the surface hopefully what that highlights is, is that texture in the same way that applying a guide coat to your paint when you first start to flat the paint you can see the low spots the low spots here look dark you can just just about see the texture of where I brushed the glue on but it's not excessive because it was quite a smooth application and basically we just keep on sanding very gently in a very precise manner we're not sanding the whole model we're not sanding around the piece of foil we are sanding only I don't know why I keep saying we I am sanding only this piece of foil that I have just applied and I'm watching the sanding marks which are showing me whether I've achieved a flat level finish or not as I go And there you go, after some minutes of sanding, a couple of minutes only, I now have basically a smooth flat area of foil. All the text, texture from the glue has been smoothed out, those little bumps at the back here are gone. It's, it's, there's still a little bit of light texture there because of the surface of the plastic underneath not being completely flat, but as I said I'm not that concerned about that. And the finish from there, that is a little bit too coarse of a finish. I have some Trizact, of course, 
and I just rub the whole thing and I do use a bit more pressure with the Trizac but bear in mind in it this is quite worn out and it starts off at 3000 grit you can get away with it and being foam backed as well takes a lot of the harshness out of it as a sanding medium so also I'm not going to damage the surrounding plastic whatsoever with this Trizac no matter how hard I press so I can get away with it and you see there's a bit of black residue coming away here you do get extremely dirty fingers doing this that's from the metal okay and there you have it that panel is to all intents and purposes complete so this model will be representing quite a worn dirty in surface machine so I will be using probably flat coats and maybe some burnishing fluids to dull the finish once everything is foiled but at this stage that is all we need to do voila to do a panel like this as you've just seen takes a few minutes and it is a very simple process if you do it exactly the way I just showed you, you should, should be pretty much foolproof. That's not the case when it comes to sort of wing roots and things, there's a bit, <laughs> a bit more planning uh, effort and, and skill going into that with the planning of how, how you attack it and which direction you move the foil in and, and the stick and everything else. I did cover that to some extent in the Book of Genesis uh, video on foiling where I foiled the cowling of a, B40, a P47 um, but honestly practice at the end of the day a little bit of knowledge about how metal reacts to being bent is useful but you can achieve that knowledge simply by practicing with it uh, try foiling different things in different ways until a result is found that pleases you here, here is a, a cowling is the a mule but there's a bit of cowling this bit's been polished so you can get that polished warbird finish if you want it uh, and this is showing you how I've foiled all the way around the front of that cowling edge and indeed a wing root foil uh, fairing that is two pieces but if you go back if you're interested if you go back and look at the book of Genesis video that does cover that and were I to do this now I would be gluing the model and the foil instead of just the model like I did in that. But yeah, essentially, quite a simple process um, and practice, practice, practice will help with the foiling of the more complex areas as I say. I did receive some comment, or a comment, on the initial foiling video uh, where the viewer suggested that um, the finish was actually know better than many silver painted models he'd seen um, and he was annoyed because the finish wasn't polished like the thumbnail well you can polish it if you want to as, I, as you see and it doesn't you know there it is it's polished uh, but you know everybody's well, entitled to their, their opinion on things even when it's wrong so that's fine but here this this again won't be polished this this will be less bright actually than it is now but i'm i was concerned or concerned which is a bit of an overstatement but i, I did wonder if the foil finish might not look a little bit over the top in 70 second scale might look a bit too much but actually I think it works really well now that I'm getting on with it. Um, so there we go. And I'll test fit it back together. So that's where it, that's where it's going to end for this one. Um, the next instalment, I'll get this foiling finished, and then the next instalment, look at deckling and probably some weathering. Uh, potentially even taking it all the way to the end. But for now, it only remains for me to say, oh. Sorry about the noise, it's peeing down with rain outside, so if you can hear a funny tapping noise. I have scaffolding up outside my uh, window here, doing some work on the houses, and uh, 
the, <laughs> the rain's dripping onto it and making it quite a loud noise. So sorry about that if you can hear it. But yeah, that aside, only remains for me to say. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, give foiling a go, and Genesis out. <laughs>